Hello, fellow YouTubers, welcome up to part two of the Ruby Nuzlocke. And real quick, the team, Martha, the Zigzago, level eight, Buggy, the Cascoon, and here's the shocker, Boggy, the Silcoon. Mudlup is now level 11, I am sorry for that. And I think Naughty Nature helps his ground moves. Could, could, could be wrong. Jolly lowers attack and raises speed. I believe. I don't I don't normally pay attention to that, so forgive me if I am wrong. We also have a new route, so we're gonna have a new encounter. And we're either gonna have three or four encounters in this part. So that should be pretty exciting. Now this wormhole, there is literally nothing we can get out of this wormhole. And I'm not gonna be that douche, as I said in the first video, who yells, Doob's claws! Because I don't want to catch another worm pole. I just don't want it. So, bye bye worm pole. Not about that life. Not about the Doob's Claws life. So, now we can finally see the team in action. We got Martha, the Zigzagoon, and I forgot that CDOT uses Bide. So, we're gonna send Mudlup in there. I hate Bide. You're. There's your Mudlup fact of the day. Bide is an insanely douchey move, and I hate it. Because right there, I had to worry about if I was going to lose a Pokemon. Almost double its level, and I had to worry about if I was going to lose my Pokemon. That's bullcrap. Straight up bullcrap. I shouldn't have to worry about that. He should be worried but how he's going to survive if he doesn't attack. That's what we, that's what should be worried about. Now, I I also remembered that crits are really scary in Gen 3 because I feel like they do more than two times damage. So, and see, that was me playing smart. Um, <sighs> we're already at a close call. The peck would have been super effective against everybody, and the peck had a possibility, if it would have been a crit, to kill Zigzagoon. So I got him out of there, and after one battle, we are we are turning tail, and we are running to the Pokemon Center, because we are not going to lose. We aren't. For anybody thinking about doing a Nuzlocke out there, if by chance you stumble across my my humble little video, okay? In a Nuzlocke, you can't be afraid to heal. You can't have a pride problem and be like, I don't want to go to the Pokemon Center, the Pokemon Center so far! You go. If there's anything to learn in a Nuzlocke, it is that. Because if you don't, your Pokemon die. I don't care if you're training, I don't care what's going on, you get out of there. Your Pokemon shouldn't die. Now, I know, for example, there are unforeseen circumstances. You have random crits, you have little rich boys who have hyper potions, but you know, sometimes you get around that. Well, they have full restores, I believe. But, um, you have lots of little things like that, and they pop up, and they do, I'm not denying that, and it sucks when they do, because of course it sucks. For example, another unforeseen circumstance, when my Silver Nuzlocke, I had a Pidgeotto named Benson, and the theme for that Nuzlocke was everybody has a catchphrase, and the Pidgeotto's name was Benson, and the catchphrase was... You know when you get arrested, the police read you your rights. You know, you have a right to an attorney if you cannot afford one. No, it starts with, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you do or say can be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be provided for you. And all that good stuff. If you've ever watched Law & Order, you've heard it. You know, if, if you've watched probably like any crime show, you've heard it. And... The Benson was named after Olivia Benson from SVU. All good and dandy. We're in the fighting gym in 
Benson had been in the team for literally since the first part. And we got screwed. Machop doesn't evolve to level 28. We were battling a level 25 Machoke. So we're battling something that physically can't exist. And then he uses a move he can't physically learn. You can't prepare for what can't happen. He, he used, I think it was Rock Slide, it was some rock move. And so I checked on Bulbapedia, and he can learn it. But he can only learn it when Gen 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Because that rock move is a TM. But in Gen 2, it wasn't. Because they got rid of it as that. So there's no way for him to learn it unless he was brought over from Gen 1. Even that doesn't change the fact he can't physically exist. So what happens? He hits his move, and it kills Benson. And there, there's no amount of preparing you can do to, to counteract something like that. Not complaining, it's just fact. You have to have a short-term memory when you are playing a Nuzlocke. Like that commercial with whatever the basketball player is. Uh, he's talking to James Harden, and he's like, Oh, all you gotta do to be one of the greats is have a short-term memory. And they, they pan over to Scottie Pippen, and uh, he says, Oh, I'm the greatest bull of all time. Which everybody knows isn't true, because I'm pretty sure anybody who knows anything about basketball would would completely agree that Michael Jordan was a better player. Even if you don't, you've heard of Michael Jordan, you probably haven't heard of Scottie Pippen. So, that's just, it's a hilarious commercial just for that, but that's not the point. The point is, you can use that information for your Nuzlocke. Okay? Don't remember things. You remember things, you're gonna screw up more. You, you just gotta push through and just keep going. There's no problem with doing that. And you also have to be decent at math. <laughs> Which I know sounds stupid, but pretty much every turn I'm counting how much damage is done to me. Like, each of those Wurmples was doing two damage to Boggy. And the whole reason you're doing that is pretty much just in the off chance that you get a, they get a crit, basically. You're pretty much always pinpointing how much damage has been done. Now, we didn't make an encounter here, did we? So, we're, we're so good for that. And it's part two, and we've already run into the opposing team, which I think is actually pretty interesting, because in Gen 1, you don't battle Team Rocket until Mount Moon, which I think, for my Nuzlocke, was like seven Barts in. Well, it wasn't that far. It was... I think it was five. And then in Gen 2, a level 9 Bucciana. Wow. I'm also meticulous about where my moves are, but back to the point. Um, you don't battle them on Gen 2 until pretty much around the same time. You're in the town with a second gym when you, when you first battle Team Rocket. But on this game, you battle them before you even get to the first gym. Pretty interesting. Just a little side note. In Gen 4, I think you battle Team Galactic after you get the first gym badge. Gen 5, I think you run into him before then. And Gen 6, I've got... I'm pretty sure it's after the first gym badge, at least. Oh, you're gonna give me a Great Paw. Oh, Zigzagoon? Well, Martha, in the first episode... Well, off-screen from the first episode. Picked up an Ultra Ball. So, that's pretty awesome. You know... The one thing I don't like about Gen 3, and you, I'll never defend it, we're ignoring this Zigzagoon, is the fact you need Water-type HM Slave. Just no. No, Game Freak, no. Because half of the, the map is water. And I know why they did it. I know because the idea is the map physically represents yin and yang. You know, on Ruby, the team's trying to create more ground. On Sapphire, they're trying to create more water. 
but Hoenn is 50% land and 50% water. I love it. It's a great idea, okay? But there's too many water rats. I hate water rats. If it's completely covered in water, I don't want it in my game. I don't want it. You can take it and you can do whatever you want with it. Just keep it out of my game. So this is Route 104, I believe this guy gives you Bullet Seed. Yeah, which doesn't really help us. I don't think anybody can learn it. I think Beautifly can. But that's not really a thing for right now. This is the same route as the other side. And we had another item to take. And we received a rare candy. That's that's pretty baller. Not even gonna lie. I know there's a double battle coming up. The team's pretty beat up. And this is a rich girl or... I don't know what they call him on this game, but she's the opposite of a rich boy. Lady. <laughs> Lady, and that makes perfect sense. We got Buggy, who I had trained first, and I was very surprised when he evolved in the Cascoon, or she, and then the Boggy evolved into Soulcoon. I was very happy with that. Hopefully they both stay alive for long enough to where it actually makes a difference. And that, that's something else to also bring up. I didn't bring it up in the last video. Not many of my Pokemon actually faint. And there, there's a reasoning why. Again, I'm very meticulous about things, and I don't like leaving my Pokemon out to where they can die. I don't. I like knowing where everything is. I, I, I like knowing how much damage is being done and how much damage can be done. And I like thinking ahead. Really, the times Pokemon die are always stupid mistakes on my part. Or the game screwing me. And usually, if the game screws me, I remember. And if I screw up, I remember. I think every death on my Leaf Green Nuzlocke was me being stupid. If memory recalls correctly. That was a stupid mistake on my part. I should have been using Poison Sting in preparation for the full restore, which would heal the poison. I screwed up. These little mistakes, they happen all the time. Usually, they don't matter. But, sometimes they do, and you get screwed hard on them. For example, this Zigzagoon has been alive for far too long. I, I should just switch out to Mudlup and Water Gun it but I'm concerned about experience, and that's why I said he's been in there for too long. I didn't know how many times he'd used Tail Whip. I wasn't keeping track because I was talking so much. And because of that, if that would have been a crit, we would have lost her. You got to pay attention. That's why I think recording a Nuzlocke and recording audio with it at the same time makes it a lot more likely that you're going to screw up because that's pretty much been the whole problem for me. So, and I think we have a, we got a potion. So we're gonna heal Buggy. And we're just gonna run over here, battle this lass. Should I, or shouldn't I? Yeah, who cares? Nobody cares what this lass does with her life, Lass Haley. There's another definition of a, a cool Gen 3 Pokemon. Lotad. And then, to add on to that, you also have C Dot. Both are really cool. Really, their first two forms, eh, could do without them. But Ludicolo and Shift Tree, very cool. And I don't care what anybody says, Pokemon will never be racist. Like, <laughs> the Pokemon designs are never built to be racist. They're not stupid like that. There is no way that in like 98 they made a Pokemon dressed in blackface. You know? And all he's using is Absorb and I know there's no problem with that so we're just gonna whittle him down. Because that's what you gotta do when you have weak Pokemon. That's something else you'll, you'll learn about me. I do not like Pokemon that can't kill things. And of course, there is always an exception to the rule, Shuckle. I freaking love Shuckle. 
and I don't know why, and I'll never understand it, but Shuckle is without a doubt one of the coolest Pokemon ever. For a while I was looking for a Shuckle to put on my keyring, but uh, I never ended up doing that. Shroomish, another example of a cool Gen 3 Pokemon. Evolves into the grass fighting Breloom, which doesn't really help him that much. Stupid, but it's pretty cool. You know, you can't really lie. And right now, we're noticing a key weakness in the team, and this is something you always want to keep an eye on. This Shroomish could screw us up, because we can't switch Mudlop in there. The Absorb could kill him. And Boggy is in the same boat as Buggy, and Zigzagoon, well, Martha, has already been injured, so we don't want to put her in there, too. So really, we're just going to try to wall it out and pray that, pray to the Arceus above that we manage to take care of the Shroomish. But what we have learned, we need a fire or a flying type. And that that's good to know, because that also brings up the fact that we need a Pokemon for the second gym. General rule of thumb, you want to have a critical hit move, well, critical hit move, a stab super effective move for each gym. Seems pretty self-explanatory. If I need to explain it, I will. Don't think it's necessary. Stab makes you stronger. Critical hits make you stronger. Stronger makes you stronger. Stronger is stronger. And I'm, <laughs> I, I can't make that more clear. You just, you always want to be ready for anything. And this is why I like having Zigzagoon in the party. Because, oh, that's right, you don't have to do double battles in this game. But, that is, I can't remember what I was saying. Some about stronger. I remember saying stronger a bunch. <laughs> but yeah, and we were going to regret leaving Mudlup in there. Because he's in a bad spot. But we can target Lotad first, because CDOT's going to use Bide. Low-level CDOTs only have Bide. Bide and Harden. And Lotad is being stupid. But of course that makes sense. He has Absorb. Nature Power, he learns at 14 when he evolves, I believe. And then he has Astonish, which doesn't affect normal types. Lotad is a lot more difficult to train than you would imagine. Especially for how brilliant of a typing he is. And see, Lotad's just being stupid. It happens more than you would think. Don't ever get complacent. And I don't know why this Nuzlocke's theme seems to be, I'm giving you advice. So, I am sorry. But my advice is the best advice. And that's something you're all going to learn. Because I'm the best Nuzlocker in the history. Of history. In the history. I'm Makes no sense. And my foot is out. <laughs> but it failed. And that's a double battle tip that I've learned. Unless you can kill one of the Pokemon with one hit, you pretty much just want to target one of them and try to knock them out. That's generally the goal. Because if you do that, really, you knock them out twice as fast. And, <laughs> like, mathematically, it doesn't make sense. But... I just think it works better that way. An all-out force on one Pokemon pretty much guarantees that Pokemon's going to be down sooner. And that's just how I've always taken it. It's what I do in double battles and triple battles, but not rotation battles because obviously and not rotation battles. But yeah. So, there you go. We beat the twins. They weren't that big a deal. Both of my feet are now asleep, and that's, that, that's a bigger deal. And I want to battle this guy, but I think he's one of the Magikarp trainers. So I'm going to avoid him like he is the plague. Because I don't like the Magikarp trainer. He's annoying, and he irritates me. One of the few things I've never memorized about Pokemon games is where the rods are. So if I walk past one of the rods, stupidly, you need to comment and tell me that because I will completely miss out on a, a rod. The old rod, I really don't care about. I don't think anybody does. You know, it's stupid, doesn't help at all. 
but like the Great Rod, if I walk past that, tell me, because just about every town in a Pokemon game has a water supply, which makes sense because even in the real world, most towns are built around water supplies. Pretty self-explanatory. Route 115. I just want to see if there's grass on this route. Because that would be another easy encounter. But there is not. And that is not really a big deal. Because at least we get this Pokeball. Which is another Super Potion. Which means we've, we've run into more Super Potions now than regular Potions. And Orin Berries put together. Which is odd. But we're going to go this way and... Really, we're just going this way because we want to make an encounter. And maybe we'll battle a few trainers. And we got a Whismur. And I like Whismur. But I don't think I want one for the team. Because we have a Zigzagoon. And really, Whismur isn't going to offer anything that Zigzagoon isn't already offering. Except, Zigzagoon is offering more. So, we are not going to catch Whismur. We are not. If... Hypothetically, this was like something with more upshot or a Pokemon that has a better ability or anything really. We would be going after it. But really, even his typing screws him. So, see, that was smart. See, he was doing six damage to Buggy. And if he would have done a crit, it would have been 12 damage. 12 damage was how much health he had left. This Whismur would have just killed Buggy. You gotta always be in the mindset of what if crit. That is the best mindset to be in. And I really don't feel comfortable leaving Buggy out there anymore. We're gonna put Martha in the lead. And we're just gonna battle a trainer or two until 25 minutes is up. This is something else I do typically. I'll start taking care of the next route in a previous video. That way, it's not as big of a, a thing for the next video. If that makes sense. And we're going to note that I believe Zigzagoon learns Headbutt at level 8. So this Zigzagoon could have been a problem. Luckily, this youngster is stupid, as pretty much every trainer in Pokemon games are. So, we got that guy down. We got him a chop, which we definitely don't want to leave Martha in there for. And I know you're all questioning why am I throwing Boggy in there. Boggy is going in for two reasons. For one, experience. Two, because fighting type moves suck against poison types. But I think they also suck against bug types. So he shouldn't be able to do much damage. And we got the hacks. The hacks are with us this episode. And he got poisoned. Low kick shouldn't do that much. Ooh. He did use focus energy before that. He did 16 damage. And another crit would kill us. So we're going to switch out. We're going to throw Mudlup out there. Mudlup being over leveled has really helped us out in this part. And really, low kick. And he got another crit. And there you go right there. He would have killed Boggy. Boggy would be dead. We've already witnessed, what, three times in this video where one of our Pokemon could have died. And it is amazing to think how much this happens. I think they changed the ratio for Gen 3 and made it higher. Or maybe I'm just so used to Gen 2 where I'm just slaughtering everything in my path. And there's another crit. Again, it's out of control. But you always got to be ready for these things. So, Boggy grew to level 9. Due, due to the fact that we're at 24 minutes and we're pretty much dead, we're going to go heal and that's going to wrap the video up. So if you've enjoyed the video, leave me a like. Comment, share, subscribe, any of that stuff you do for anybody else if you've enjoyed their video. But you know, also I'd like to say thank you for viewing this video if you're still here. Wow, mad props. I must either be doing something right or you have no life. Don't know which it is, but hopefully it's the first one. So if you've enjoyed the video, yada yada yada, uh, peace out, I'm Skillets.